Well, Lithuania has contributed half a billion dollars worth of military assistance to Ukraine's war efforts so far. Its latest package includes detonation systems, radars, as well as ammunition. Lithuania is also starting to repair leopard tanks for Ukraine this month. The country says it will continue to support Kyiv until victory. Lithuanian's Foreign Minister Gabriela Landsbergis joins me now from the United Nations headquarters. Minister, great to see you, great to have you back on the show again. We heard, we played a little clip there from President Zelensky. Uh, we also heard from him addressing Security Council today where he called for Russia's veto uh, power to be uh, revoked. Are calls growing for Russia's removal and how likely is this to happen? Uh, well, first of all, I think that uh, President Zelensky used this opportunity to come to uh, United Nations live and reinvigorate uh, the assistance to, uh, to Ukrainian uh, fight against the invasion. And he mentioned all the right things. Uh, yesterday in General Assembly, uh, he really called for things uh, as they are. And today in uh, Security Council, he, he called for the reform of, uh, of the Security Council. And truly, I think that the, the, time, uh, the time is right to ask these questions. And even though they've been on the agenda for, I would say, last decade, but after Ukraine wins, if, wins this war, I would not uh, discount that the United Nations would find itself in a different situation than it is now. And the reality is, and you would have known this, you would have heard the, the comments you know, at the UN this week, there are some leaders, many leaders, you say, some from the global south, that have decided not to take sides, many neutral to what is unfolding in Ukraine. What do you say, Minister, to those countries? Can they be brought on board here? Well, I think that also during the General Assembly, uh, the phrase was said that Ukraine's uh, fight is everybody's fight. If we allow uh, a country, an aggressive neighbor, to cross its neighbor's borders, invade, uh, ask to change the government, uh, occupy parts of its territory. And if we allow that reality to stay and to happen, uh, that means that nobody, nobody can feel safe, no matter where you are, no matter which continent, no matter how big you are, there's, there, was, there is always a bigger, uh, a bigger fish that can, get, that can threaten you. Did so, that resonate? Uh, Did that resonate? Did, do you think that was, he was able to change minds? Uh, what we're seeing right now, actually what worries me a lot, is that uh, we see that the, the mood is different than it was a year ago. Uh, a year ago, Ukraine was the question, the problem. Now, uh, even, even President Biden, you know, he, uh, in, his, uh, in his address, he mentioned a number of problems. So the world you know, has to accept the fact that there are other problems, there are other issues. But we, especially those who are affected by the war the most, like my country, we need to address this, that until Ukraine has won, nobody is safe. And actually, to, to, to add to that, I mean, we are, if, if Ukraine is unable to win, if Putin can claim victory, then it spells problem and it spells a new geopolitical reality for everybody, not just for Ukraine, not just for Lithuania and those who are uh, bordering Russia, but basically every country now has to rethink where and how they are going to live if Ukraine is, is not able to win. Let's focus then on Ukraine, keep focused on Ukraine and on the counteroffensive, Minister. We have been learning over the last several weeks from our correspondents on the ground, from Ukrainian officials, that progress is being made on that counteroffensive, both in the south as well as in the east, in particular in the last few days in Bakhmut. What is your assessment of the progress so far? Uh, and critically, what does Ukraine need to keep up that momentum? Well, first of all, we, we need to be patient. It's, it's a very difficult war. And Ukraine is still not supplied enough. Uh, I, I know that many countries has, and, and my own country, we have devoted almost everything that we have, but, but it's, still, it's still not enough. You know, the best comparison is to what Ukraine actually needs to, uh, to have a faster counteroffensive, mm. is to look in, into the countries that are purchasing weapons, uh, that are also n near, near Russia. You know, take Poland, for example. They've just uh, secured a contract for almost 470 HIMARS rocket launching systems. Uh, Ukraine has 20 of those. So, you know, that's, that, that, that can give you an idea of how much more Ukraine would need in order to have this counteroffensive going faster. So, uh, so let's be patient with them. They're mm. paying uh, for, for the counteroffensive with their blood, with the lives of their, with their people. We're just, you know, we're just footing the bill. So, uh, so I don't think that it's, it's, it's morally right to, to expect them to go faster or criticize that they are not 
uh, achieving the goals that we think that should be, should be achieved. They're doing what they can, and I have full trust that they can win. Minister, now that I have you here briefly, I'm keen to get your thoughts on the tensions we've been seeing in Nagorno-Karabakh. What, 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 what is your assessment of, of this truth, and can it last? Well, uh, there is some optimism today uh, that, uh, that there is a ceasefire, the negotiations might, might start, uh, but the whole tendency is, is very worrisome. And I don't think that it's, it's just a coincidence that we're talking about Ukraine, about the war there, and another inflection point appearing in, in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, some countries might seize this opportunity or see this as an opportunity so that the Western countries are preoccupied with Ukraine. We cannot divide our attention and then they can do things like uh, like shell, uh, shell civilian, civilian cities. So it is it is worrying. And, and yesterday when the event started, uh, yeah. my country, as well as many other European countries and, you know, uh, countries uh, globally, Asked for Azerbaijan uh, to, to stop their to stop their activities and, and sit down and peacefully uh, negotiate for the solution. Gabriel Lislandsberg is Lithuanian foreign minister. Sir, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.